Welcome pre-cal students to the homework help video, page 889, numbers 31 through 41 all. And for some reason, my Mimeo pad, there it goes, now it's working. Um, go ahead and turn in your books to page 889, get out your homework, pens, pencils, calculators, and hopefully I can help you with some problems you're struggling with. All right, number 31 reads as follows. Number 31 reads as follows, a program is planned to have five rock numbers and four speeches. In how many ways can this be done if a rock number and a speech are to alternate um, and a rock number is to come first? So here we go. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, so what we have is we have five performers that are singing and four that are speaking. And so we're going to have nine all together nine uh, nine different performances going on. Some are singing and some are going to be speaking. Now, we, it says in the problem that a singer must come first and so we know we have five options to choose from so I'm going to put a five here. Okay. The next comes a speaker so we'll skip that. The next comes a singer so we have four options left and then next comes a speaker then a singer, so we have three singers left to choose from, then a speaker, then a singer, we have two left to choose from, and then a speaker, and then a music performer, so we have one left. Now let's take care of the speeches. There are four speeches. So right here I have four to choose from, and then one's gone, so now I have three to choose from, and then um, now I have two to choose from, and then one to choose from. If you multiply all those numbers together, you will come up with 2,880 different arrangements that you could arrange these different performers. All right, number 32. How many distinguishable code symbols, how many distinguishable code symbols can be formed from the letters of the word business, biology, and mathematics. So we're going to have three different problems here, three different answers. Notice on 32 also it says distinguishable code symbol. So let's start with the word business. The word business has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total. Let me erase that. So put it right here, eight total. And now in the denominator we're going to look for um, we're going to look for pairs or, or repeats. There's only one B, there's only one U, there's three S's, so I'm going to put three factorial. There's only one I, one N, and one E. So if we uh, take eight factorial divided by three factorial, really I would have a seven, a six, a five, a four, and then instead of putting three, two, one, I'll put three factorial, cross off your three, cross off your three, you're left with seven, eight times seven times six times five times four, that's 20, uh, 120, 840, 840 times eight, uh, 32 carry your three, um, I'm getting 6,720. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the next word in this problem, which is biology. I guess it would help if I wrote it down here so we can see it. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total letters. And now I only see one B, one I, I see two O's, one L, one G, and one Y. So if you have seven factorial over two factorial, and again, I'm not being lazy, guys, but there's really no need for me to do the simple math for you when you can use your calculators or multiply on your own. You will get 2,520. I don't think any student has a hard time taking the problem from here to here. Just some students have a hard problem setting it up. So um, let's move on now to the last word in number 32. And the last word was mathematics. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven total letters. M. I'm going to put cross them off. We have two M's. We have two A's. We have two T's. One H. So we don't care about the H. One E. 
1c and 1s. So this is how the problem should be set up. 11 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And if you type that in correctly, you will come up with 4,989,600 different ways that these letters can be arranged distinguishably. Okay, distinguishable permutations. All right, let's take a look at number 33. How many seven-digit phone numbers can be formed with 10 digits? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 10 digits. How many seven or 10 numbers to choose from? Excuse me. How many seven-digit phone numbers can be formed, assuming that the first number cannot be 0 or 1? So here we go. We want to figure out how many seven-digit phone numbers we have. So here's what a typical phone number looks like. You have three digits, then a dash, then four more digits, so seven digits. Now the first blank here cannot be a zero or a one. So we only have eight options for the first blank. Now think about this. In a phone number, you can have repetition. You can have a phone number that's 8505555. So I have 10 options for this blank, 10 options for this blank, 10 options here, 10 options here, 10 options here, 10 options here. So really what you have is eight times 10 to the sixth power okay and if you of course type that incorrectly you're going to get 8 million for the answer now that's a very practical problem because now you know for a certain area code um, like a 423 area code for a 423 area code you can have 8 million phone numbers all right 8 million now, the rest of the problem says this. Accordingly, how many telephone numbers can there be within a given area code before the area code needs to be split into a new area code? And we just answered that 8 million. Okay? 8 million phone numbers are available on this one area code here or whatever area code we're talking about. Let me get a drink here while we move on to number 34. Okay, number 34. A professor is going to grade her 24 students on a curve. She will give three A's, five B's, nine C's, four D's, and three F's. In how many ways can she do this? Now, I'm not, I think this problem is decently poorly written um, because when it says in how many ways can she do this, I'm not sure exactly what they're asking for, how many different ways the A's and B's can be arranged or the, the students or whatever, but I'm going to go ahead and just address the problem. What they're trying to get you to do is they're trying to get you to see you have 24 total students and then the repeats would be three A's, five B's, nine C's, four D's, and three F's. And so it would be 24 factorial divided by this denominator right here. And if you type that in correctly, it's going to be something like 16 trillion uh, 491 billion 24 million 950 thousand 400. Okay. Now, again, I'm not really a fan of how the problem was worded. I would not give you one like this on a test, but that's basically what they wanted you to do. Okay? Number 34. All right, number 35. Suppose the expression a squared b cubed c to the fourth is rewritten without exponents. In how many ways can this be done? Now, they really should have used the word distinguishable here, and they didn't, but that is what they wanted you to do. On a test, I would make sure that I put that. So first of all, we're going to write it without exponents. So a times a times b times b times b times c times c times c times c. All right, so let's take a look at this. Now, to be honest with you, seeing that they did not use the word distinguishable, and they really should have. If they didn't, though, I mean, if I didn't on a test, you would just put, and there's what? Five, you just have nine, eight, seven, all the way down to one, okay? So they really should have put distinguishable, but they did want you, I've checked the answer already, they did want you to use distinguishable permutations here. So I have a total of nine options to choose from. I have two that are repeats, three that are repeats, 
and four that are repeats. So how many different ways can I arrange these letters so that the um, the arrangements are distinguishable? Well, the answer would be 1,260 if you type this in correctly. Okay, moving on to number 36. A penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter are arranged in a straight line. So I've got a quarter. Here's a dime. I guess a nickel's a little bigger. And then my penny. Okay, um, can, letter A, 36, letter A. Considering just the coins, in how many ways can they be lined up? Well, this should be one of the easiest problems we've done all assignment. We have four options. We use one here. Now we have three options. Then we have two options. Then we have one. So the answer would obviously be 24. Okay? But then they say this. Now think about this. Then they say, considering the coins have heads and tails, in how many different ways can they be lined up? Okay, so now really this quarter here has two different ways you could you could um, put it in line and this dime has two different ways and this nickel has two different ways and this penny has two different ways that you could um, put the penny down and so now we got to reconsider this so we have eight coins or excuse me four coins one two three four now when you put one coin here how many options do you have well it could be a heads quarter or a tails quarter or a heads dime or a tails dime or a heads nickel or a tails nickel or a heads penny or a tails penny. So you have eight different options for your first blink. However, when you put an eight here, don't think your next blink is going to be seven. That's not true because once you put a coin here, I don't care which coin it is, it totally gets rid of that coin and that's two options gone. Now you have six options left and then when you put a coin here that gets rid of a coin then you have six then you have four options left then when you point put a coin here that gets rid of a coin and then you have two options left so if you type that in correctly you will get 384 okay so just making you think a little bit problem solving and kind of figuring out how to line these up all right let me get a drink here and let's take a look at number 37 Okay, four, ki four quick problems for number 37. How many code symbols can be formed using five out of six letters? So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we're going to arrange these in sets of five. Letter A, no repeats. So I have five blanks. We would have six has no repeats. So I have six options for the first blank. Then I use one. So I have five, then four, then three, and then two. And so my answer would be 720. Okay. Now let's look at option B. Option B is there can be repeats. Okay. If there can be repeats, then I would have six options. Then I could use that same one again. So six more options, then six more, six more, and six more. So your answer would be six to the fifth power, which is 7,776. Okay. All right. Moving on to option C. Or problem C are not repeats so you have no re, no repeats but you must begin with the letter D okay let's put our five blanks no big deal okay for our first blank we have how many options one because it has to be the letter D now cross D off then there's no repeats allowed so how many options do I have left here for this blank well one two three four five so I have five options then four then three and then two. So my answer would be 120 if you multiplied those together correctly. All right. Option letter D says there can be no repeats, but the first two blanks must begin with DE. So you must have a D here and an E here. So how many options do I have for this blank? One. How many options for this blank? One. Cross off the E. Now I have how many options left for this blank? One, two, three, four. I have four options here, no repeat, so then I have three options left, and then two. All right. So I would have a total of 24 different ways that I could arrange the letters as long as D and E come first. All right, moving on to number 38. A state forms its license plates by first listing a number that corresponds to the county. Then the plate then the plate lists a letter of the alphabet. 
and this is followed by a number from 1 to 999 or 9999. How many such plates are possible if there are 80 counties? Okay, well let's just take our time to this. Let's not rush and let's not panic. Let's just take a look at this. First of all, the license plate is formed um, by a number that corresponds to a county and there are 80 counties. So I'm going to put a big blank right here. This is a little unorthodox, but listen, <clears throat> I'm going to put one blank here and I have 80 options. I mean, that's what it says. It says the first part of the license plate is a number that represents a county, and there are 80 counties. So I'm going to put a blank. I have 80 options. Now, in my next blank, if you read the problem carefully, next comes a letter of the alphabet. So in this blank, I have how many options? Well, if there's 26 letters in the alphabet, then I have 26 options. Do you see how permutations are almost always about options? How many options do I have to choose from? Okay, and then next it says I'm going to choose a number from 1 to 9,999. So for this blank right here, I have how many options? 9,999. So before I multiply these together, let's go through this one more time. I had 80 counties, so I had 80 options for my first blank. I had one letter of the alphabet here, that's 26 options. And then here, I would have a number 1 through 9,999, so that's 9,999 options. Okay? Now, and actually, I'm trying to think this through for a second. Now, if you multiply those together, what you're going to get is this. You're going to get 20,797,920. So what that tells you is that's how many license plates you can have for that area that issues license plates. Okay? All right, number 39. A U.S. postal zip code is a five-digit number. Letter A. How many zip codes are possible if any of the digits 0 to 9 can be used. Well, we know it's a five-digit zip code, and if you know anything about zip codes, um, you know there, there can be repeats. Um, and my old zip code in Ohio was 44905, and notice there was a repeat here. So you can definitely have repetition. So we have 10 options here, 10 options here, 10 options here, 10 options here, and 10 options here. So we could have 10 to the fifth power. We could have 100,000 possible um, zip codes that we could use for the country of America. Okay, now let's take a look at letter B. Letter B reads, if each post office has its own zip code, how many post offices would there be? Well, that's easy. We just said there's a total of 100,000 zip codes, and if each zip code had one post office, then that means there would be 100,000 post offices. Okay, so that part there is pretty simple. Let me grab a drink here. We'll move on to number 40. Okay, number 40. A zip plus four postal code, code uses a nine-digit number, and it gives you an example there. Uh, 75247-5456. How many nine-digit zip plus four postal codes are possible? Well, guys, it's done like the last problem. You have nine um, digits, and each one of these blanks, you have a possibility of 10 options. Why am I saying 10 options? You could put a 0, or a 1, or a 2, or a 3, or a 4, or a 5, or a 6, or a 7, or an 8, or a 9. Add them up. That's 10 options. So in each one of these blanks, you have 10 options because you can have repeats. You could have 55555 for a zip code. So you end up having 10 to the ninth power, and 10 to the ninth power is 1 billion. Okay, moving on to number 41. Finally, our last problem. A social security number is a nine-digit number. And they give an example there, 243470825. How many different social security numbers can there be? Well, this is just like the last problem. We have 10 blanks because the social security numbers um, they're 10 digits long, and we know there can be repeats. So we know each blank has 10 options. So you end up with 10 to the ninth power, which we just saw in the last problem, is 1 billion. 
All right, one billion. So the next question, there are about 300 million people in the United States. Can each person have a unique social security number? And yes, because we can have up to one billion social security numbers. So 300 million is definitely reasonable. Okay, so there we go. That's the homework help video. I hope that's been a help to you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.